Well, good morning. Looking a little uh, unkempt or perhaps disheveled this morning. Folks back in England, I think they would say that we look like we got dragged backwards through a hedge. So, uh, a bit of a rough night here. Uh, little miss is teething. So she didn't get to sleep till about 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. It's about... Yeah, it's almost eight o'clock here now. So we did get a little bit of sleep. Um, but yeah, she's awake now and our day is gonna be, it's gonna be interesting uh, with her not feeling that great and the whole world coming down with COVID-19. I'm gonna be working from home today. So try and get a little bit of stuff done, get some chores done quick and uh, we'll see, see how productive we can be today. Good news, there's coffee. We're gonna need all the coffee today. All of it. Blub, blub, blub. Yeah. I better clean that up. Carmen's gonna have my ass. So we made waffles the other day. And make a little extra blueberry waffles too. Make a few extra and then we can slide them in the toaster. Make a great breakfast for Charlotte. She just loves waffles. So this will be a good time. Well, Charlotte goes to town on these waffles. My fat ass just gets to have coffee for breakfast because I'm on a diet. So Not quite as good as waffles, but it'll have to do. We forgot to put a bib on, so this looks like it might be a full hazmat incident here. So it's about 11 o'clock. Finally got Charlotte down for a nap. Haven't really got much work done today. Uh, she's been a busy little bee, so that's all right. Uh, now we're gonna get out and get some chores done. It's cold today, it's minus 14, uh, which you might think, well, that's not that cold. But uh, you gotta remember it is the end of March, so it is kind of time for, to wrap this winter nonsense up. Uh, we got some vegetable scraps here, Brussels sprouts, a little bit of sweet potato, uh, just some leftover waffle that Charlotte didn't eat. So we're gonna give that to the chickens. And uh, because it's so cold out today, we did have some soaked feed, but uh, we won't be feeding the soaked feed today because it'll just freeze and uh, it'll just make it hard for the chickens to eat. So they'll get dry feed today. Come on, girls. They love a, they love a bit of Brussels sprouts. Hi, how are you? So one thing here, it looks like they've got their uh, heated water unplugged. So their water supply is actually froze up overnight. So you can see this is the feed that we soaked uh, yesterday, or sorry, day before yesterday. Uh, we knew it was gonna get cold and we weren't gonna be able to feed it. Uh, so rather than rather than either toss it out and let it freeze or, or try and feed it to the chickens, we thought, okay, well, here's a good opportunity let's uh, cover it entirely with water and let it ferment for three or four days. So once this cold snap is over, uh, we'll have some really good fermented feed for the birds. So they'll really enjoy that. So well, this here is actually uh, our setup for the fermented feed. Pretty, uh, pretty basic. It's just a small three gallon pail with some holes drilled in the bottom. So when we soak the feed for three or four days, when it's time to feed it, we just pour it in here uh, and then we've got a little same a colander or a strainer in there and all the water will drain off the feed and then very similar to what you saw the other day you'll get that nice crumbly feed but uh, it's all the nutrients all the uh, the goodness of the feed has been has been released uh, or is or more accessible I guess uh, for the birds so it doesn't take much work it's just a little few extra little steps and you get some really good uh, quality feed.
one thing we learned this morning, uh, the heated water did get unplugged, so we just did a simple uh, loop with power cord just to make it a little bit harder to get pulled out. So, because the water is right in front of the nesting boxes, so probably just uh, a bird flying out of the nesting box, landed on the cable, unplugged it, and then a couple hours later, we've got no water. So, problem solved. So you can see, it's only been plugged in for a couple minutes. There's already some heat coming in the base, so it won't be long and this thing will be completely defrosted. But in the meantime, uh, they got lots of water here. It'll be a few hours until this freezes over. So uh, by then this will be ready to go and we can uh, top it up and they'll have water for a couple of days. So we did put Gus in here with, uh, with Rosie. I mean, he can still socialize with the other two horses, but we did want him to have a little bit of company in this pen by, you know, I know he's not entirely by himself. But I figured we put him with a horse that is a little bit bigger just so that, you know, certain things won't work just because he can't reach. There you go. One good tip for the winter when you're done feeding the horses, make sure you stick your fork back in the bale. Yesterday it got leaned up against the fence and uh, the horse knocked it over, so it took me actually quite a while to find it. How dare I show up late with Greg? Eh? Ah, ah. All right, girls, you ready? Okay, share. So it's really important to us that these guys are well taken care of. I mean, this is our grocery store, right? This is our income from the farm, is the sheep and the chickens. So we want them to be well fed. We want them to have good quality feed. So one of the things that's a big consideration when you're choosing what you're gonna feed your animals, you're essentially choosing what you're gonna eat yourself. So if you're going to the grocery store and you're buying lots of processed food, I mean, you know how that makes you feel. Not very good, right? So that's really important now. Uh, you look at some of the madness that's going on in the local grocery stores. You can't find a lot of things. You can't find flour, you can't find milk, you can't find eggs, you can't find toilet paper. I mean, this is crazy, right? Well, here we are on the farm. Are we, are we worried about that stuff? Not one bit. So we don't have everything on the farm. We don't have a milk cow. We don't have uh, turkeys or meat birds, uh, but we have the ability to trade and barter with other local producers. Really recommend you look up your local producers too and work with them. It's a really great way to know where your food is coming from. It's very important. So while the whole world goes crazy over fighting in the aisles of the grocery store, We've got fresh lamb, chicken, eggs, everything we need. We've got a bit of harsh weather right now. We're not gonna get our garden in as early as we'd hoped, but when the weather smartens up, you know, we've got a few acres here that we can plant the garden. And probably more than what we'll ever need over the course of summer. And so then in the fall, we can can a bunch of stuff and that'll carry us through to the next winter. Uh, maybe you have a small amount of acreage and limited on what you can do. So how, how do I make that count? Well, one of the things you can do is get a couple of chickens. So you can see these are our younger birds and they've already been out this morning and they've been over here pecking, scratching, working away at the soil. Uh, why is that important? Well, if you're like me and you don't like to do, you know, an excess of manual labor, you can let these guys work for you. You're, you're already putting work in and feeding them and, and trying to keep them. So you might as well get a little return on your investment and get them to work for you as well. So once all this snow melts, you see the chickens will be in here. You can kind of see a couple of little humps buried under the snow. So this is where we cleaned out the chicken houses the other day and all that composted material and excess sawdust and chicken poop and everything went there and it all snowed on top of it. 
So that stuff will rot down a little bit more and then when the snow melts the chickens will go over there and spread it around and peck through it and, and process it into some great natural compost. So compost, compost, compost. Not all compost is created equal. You can buy the bag stuff from the store and it's pretty good. Uh, but the stuff that your chickens can produce and scratch through and work with worms and whatnot on your, on your own soil uh, is probably the best stuff you're ever gonna find. It's gonna be a lot better for your soil, for vegetable growth than any of the stuff you can find in the store. So for any of you that haven't actually been to the farm, uh, this is where we're at. We're up on top of a hill. We look down over the quarter section out onto uh, Hay Lake. So down in the bottom there, we've got some really rich fertile soil, lots of peat moss. Uh, but up here on the hill, we're very exposed. Uh, there's a lot of wind and there's not a lot of topsoil. So that's one reason why we really preach how important it is to work with your own compost to enrich your soil. So we will add, we'll be adding a lot of organic material uh, to our garden this summer. You can see out here, uh, well, you can't really see right now because everything's covered in snow, but there's a big pile of uh, manure and bedding from last winter. So we're going to be working that into our main vegetable garden. And then over to the to the west over here where the chickens are, that's where we'll be working with uh, basically live manure, fresh manure, working that in, letting the birds do what they do in between the rows of trees uh, and then planting a cover crop. So being on the side of the hill, we do we deal with uh, not only erosion from water, but also from the wind. So we're gonna wanna get a, get a cover crop in there, uh, get some solidity, I guess, to the surface of the soil. Uh, as we also really wanna get some weed management going there. So we had a big mayweed problem. Mayweed, as you know, is a noxious weed. So despite your best efforts, it just gets everywhere and it spreads and spreads and spreads. So we don't want to spend a bunch of time. The first year, I don't know how many trailer loads of mayweed we pulled and bagged and pulled and bagged and burnt. Uh, again, not a good use of our time. And we really want to minimize how much we're doing, uh, any kind of spraying or anything like that. We really want to try and keep the chemical load down. It's not good for the soil. It's not good for the animals. So. We will be turning the turning the sheep loose, turning the chickens loose, and letting them letting them do the work for us. So once they've done all that work and conditioned the soil, we'll be able to get that cover crop in. Uh, probably plant some rye grass, a few grains, some legumes, pumpkins, potatoes, carrots, things like that. Things that are good for the soil. Things that return a little bit of nitrogen, and also things that we can harvest later on and feedback either to the chickens, to the sheep, or, uh, or to the pigs.